Hello and welcome to a mini trading tutorial from OptionsAtoZ.com, the website dedicated to teaching investors the art and science of options trading. In this video, we're going to show you how to place stop and stop limit orders in the Thinkorswim platform. Thinkorswim is a brokerage firm that specializes in options trading and provides you with the industry's most powerful options trading software, which is absolutely free just for opening an account. But you're not limited to just options. You can trade stocks, mutual funds, futures, commodities, and even currencies all under the same account number. For more information, please visit their website at www.thinkorswim.com. Before I show you how to place stop orders in the Thinkorswim platform, let's quickly review what stop orders are and the two basic types that I'll be talking about. Stop orders are one of many types of risk management tools available to you. They are designed to buy or sell shares or contracts in the case of options if the price reaches a certain level. Now for this video, I'm just going to concentrate on placing sell stop orders, but just be aware that you can use stops to close out short positions and to even create long and short positions. The two basic types of stop orders I'll be talking about today are the regular stop order as well as the stop limit order. If you place a stop order, it will guarantee that your order will be executed. However, it will not guarantee the price you'll receive. On the other hand, if you place a stop limit order, it guarantees the price you'll receive, but it cannot guarantee the execution. Let's take a closer look at the mechanics of stops. Assume that you have purchased shares for $50 per share, and you decide to place a stop order at a price of 48. Here's the way it works. If the stock price continues higher, then nothing will be done. You'll keep the shares and continue to profit. However, if the stock price falls and trades at or below your stock price of 48, the order will be activated. And at this point, the computer submits a market order to sell if you placed a regular stop order or it will place a limit order to sell if you placed a stop limit order. It's very important to understand that the stop price you select is nothing more than an activation point. It is not necessarily the price you will receive if your order executes. Think of the stop price as a light switch that is either on or off. If the stock price remains above your stop, then nothing is done. But if the stock trades at or below your stop price, the switch is activated and the computer submits an order to sell. Because the stop price is nothing more than an activation point, it is also important to understand that stops do not necessarily prevent losses. The reason is that the stock price may gap far below your stop price. And it is for this reason that the SEC, the Securities Exchange Commission, banned the use of the term stop loss by professionals. Just be aware that stop orders are tools and have limitations. You are not guaranteed to lock in profits just because you're using stops. Now that you have a better idea about stops and stop limits, let's take a look at how to use these risk management orders in the Thinkorswim system. To place a stop order in the Thinkorswim system, you'll start with the Trade tab right here in the upper left corner. Let's assume you purchased 100 shares of Microsoft and now wish to place a sell stop order. All you'll need to do is to come down here to the Symbol box, type in the stock ticker symbol, which of course is MSFT, and hit Enter. In the Thinkorswim platform, you generate a buy order by clicking on the asking price, and a sell order by clicking on the bid. Because this is going to be a sell stop order, we will click on the bid, and you can see it brings up a sell order down here in the order entry tools. It is defaulted to 100 shares at a limit price, good for the day. We can change any of these defaults in the Thinkorswim system. 
We can also change the number of shares by toggling up and down right here. We can also left mouse click in that field and swipe it to manually change the number as well. Over here in the order menu, you can see it is defaulted to a limit order. Let's go ahead and open up that menu and down below you will see stop. If you click on stop, you'll see that you get a second line in your order entry down here. And Thinkorswim has deleted that limit order, replaced it with a dash and the letters MKT. That's just telling you it's going to be a market order if and when this price down below that you specify is ever reached or lower. As before, we can toggle up and down with the arrows, count by pennies, or we can left mouse click and swipe the field and manually type it from the keyboard. Let's assume you purchased shares at $25 per share and wish to place a stop order for 23. Just type in 23 from your keyboard and hit enter. Now we have an order to sell our 100 shares of Microsoft at market if the shares of Microsoft ever trade at $23 or lower. If you wanted to instead place a stop limit order from the order menu, select stop limit. Now instead of a market order, you can see that Thinkorswim has now replaced that with the letters LMT for limit order. It's now asking you here, what is your limit price that you wish to submit? In most cases, you'll want your limit order to match your stop price or even be a little bit lower just to allow yourself some room in case that stock price might be falling fairly quickly when that stop price is reached. Let's go ahead and left mouse click and swipe in that field. And let's say you wish to place a stop limit at 22.50. We'll type 22.50 and hit enter. Okay, so what have we done here? In this case, we're saying if our stop price of 23 or lower is ever reached, activate the order. But in this case, it is going to submit a limit order to try and sell those shares for 22.50 or higher. Because we'll be submitting a limit order, we know that that is not guaranteed to fill either. So really your main decision in choosing between a stop order and a stop limit order is whether you wish to hold the shares. If there is a price at which you would rather maintain your shares, use a stop limit order. On the other hand, if you'd rather get out at any cost, regardless of the price, then use a stop order. Next, we'll need to tell the system if we want the order good for the day or till canceled, and we'll do that under the rules menu here. Click on the blue arrow, and we'll see the order rules confirmation dialog box. We see time in force, TIF, here in the center. We can select for the day, good till canceled, or even for extended hours. Let's go ahead and choose good till canceled and click on OK. Once we have the order the way we want it, click on confirm and send. You'll get an order confirmation dialog box. It tells you the order, commissions, number of other pieces of information. If you wish to edit the order, click on edit. It will take you back to the previous screen. But if the order is the way you want it, simply click on send over here in the lower right corner. You can see down below in the order entry tools menu that it is a working order and that just means Thinkorswim is watching for the price if and when it should ever trade at 23 or lower, in which case it will now submit a limit order to try and sell those shares for 2250. So placing stop orders is just that fast in the Thinkorswim system. Try using your stop and stop limits as risk management tools and you'll be one step closer to mastering the art and science of options trading. If you are interested in advanced training on the Thinkorswim platform, please visit www.optionsa2z.com. I have five-week Thinkorswim training classes where I'll show you how to use the system and, more importantly, why you would select one type of order or feature over another. Training videos are emailed to you immediately following each class, and you'll also get free update videos whenever Thinkorswim makes changes to their software. 
If you have further questions, please feel free to email bill at optionsa-z.com. I hope you've enjoyed the video and now understand how to place sell stop and sell stop limits in the Thinkorswim platform.